as soon as you guys dropped out of warp, uh, you guys got um, uh, attacked immediately by some drawings, some drawings, some droids. Uh, 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 some unmanned starships in orbit, and you guys took them out. And you guys scanned the servers, try to hail people, and you guys got no response. You notice there's like a jammy single be around the uh, the town you, Metal and London you guys want to go to. So you guys sit down a few miles away in a clearing, and you guys made your way towards the city. You had some few encounters uh, with, with some um, with some patrols, and uh, you met a man named. Um, uh, what's his name? Jellic. And he kind of told you. Uh, Sorry, guys. Oh, what's up? He, he told you that there was a uh, meteor that crashed landed here about 10, 20 miles from here, and some people went to go scope it, check it out. And then they learned that the probe was some kind of like high tech probe. It wasn't really like a, it wasn't naturally occurring, but it's some like high, some high technology. But it has been destroyed in a crash. Uh, and so they, so interesting enough, the probe landed near an old crash starship that nobody really noticed before. It's probably been there for a long time. Nobody really knows. Uh, so then went to go check out this crash ship and came out with a pack full of really old tech that was really excited about. And she went to talk to the leader, Mendelin, um, in a, a Brita, that's the best mechanic in town, and um, that's his ex-wife that owns a junk shop. He wants to take you in a bit. Uh, she went to tell me about what they, what they found. And then a few a few days later, a big starship came and started hovering um, right above town, blasted all the blasted apart the commu communication building, uh, you know, just unloaded a bunch of troops in town, just basically seized the whole town, took it over. Uh, they rounded up everyone in town, and their leader was this really stern-looking woman whose face we never saw before and told us that the planet was now annexed as part of the uh, Aslanti Star Empire. Uh, anyone that protested or just shot, got shot immediately. So the uh, soldiers uh, made and buried the bodies and then forced us to unload some prefab building components, which they turned into a garrison right in the center of town. So there's this big um, garrison r right in the middle of the town. Uh... The woman, the woman that kind of told everybody like there's about you know you guys are your town's taking over, uh, asked us where the star, the crash starship turned out, turned out, uh, where, where was that? It turns out it's old Eslanti technology. It's like really ancient technology to their race. Um, and they were really inter interested to fi figure out what Sedona found, which what old tech she gathered from that from this ancient starship. Uh, so they rounded up uh, Sedona and a few others and jailed them in the garrison in the middle of town. Then the large ship went away and left behind those two drones. Uh, as kind of like a uh, kind of like a guard that you guys countered and took out. And um, they basically institute martial law in town. And when Jellic, as soon as they had the chance to get away, he ran, and three three uh, uh, three patrol uh, officers chased after him. He killed one of them before you guys encountered him. That's what the gunfire you heard. And then uh, as soon as you arrived, the other two caught up, and you guys had a battle, and that's what you guys saved him. And he kind of he told you the story I'm telling you now, and he says, uh, "We need to meet with my ex-wife in her junk shop just at the edge of town." Um, so let me uh, bring up the map. You guys see the map? Yeah. Yep. So, so right now you guys are basically all right here. Um, I'm going to move you guys right out of the way for now so I can like, kind of point exactly where you guys are at. You guys are basically just right here with Jellic. Oh, hold on. Uh, can somebody pop the link in the j chat? Let's go to roll20.net and log in. You, you, you will have the game in, the, in your room. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Looks like I need a bathroom. All right. Where is Jellic? There we go. Copy. Beer. Should I wait for uh, whoever goes to the bathroom, or should I just keep going? 
Yeah, you're not going to. I heard burps. I don't know. <laughs> Just a yes or no. <laughs> So is everybody in the game now? Yep, yeah, I'm players. Okay. Let's jam. <laughs> so you guys right here. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm lost in my text here. So he takes you back to takes you here to the back of the junk shop, and then he opens a concealed panel. A casino panel and lets you guys inside the um, junk shop. Uh, even though there's there's nobody around, he kind of urges you to kind of hurry up and get in there. So, you guys are now in the junk shop. Uh, it's a mechanics workshop that consists of three interconnected or prefabricated modules, each the size of a shipping container. The central module is is an open on one side, and appears to be a repair bay. Although the tool chest, spools of wire and broken equipment stacked haphazardly around the area imply that the repairs are going slow as best. Storage crates, broken furniture, and scrapped engines littered the yard around the junk shop. A short metal fence surrounds the yard, separating the chaos from within from the orderly path and shrubs surrounding the colonist modules. Uh, inside, you meet, uh, you see a woman. Uh, let me bring up her uh, icon. I added an entry to everybody's um, journal. You, you see a woman that introduce, introduces herself as Abrita uh, Fullen, uh, the ex-wife of uh, Jellic, the man you met earlier. She's an older, 20 screen thick-set woman with long fingers and a piercing gaze. Her wavy brown hair is pulled back in a messy bun to keep it out of the way. Uh, as soon as she sees Jello, she kind of gives him a stern face and kind of points him towards the kitchen. To hurry up and get him some snacks and drinks. And he, the, she uh, offers you guys a seat around the um, uh, the couches and tables or in, in the junk shop. She's like immediately like fr friendly to you guys. Uh, figure, she figures if he he brought you here, you know, you guys might, might you guys must need something or you know you're friendly because obviously he wouldn't bring back the Empire troops to your to the junk shop. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I uh, take off my shoes when I step in the door. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is a dirty junk shop, but okay. <laughs> I think you're going to step on a rusty nail. I deserve it. She looks up to you, to you guys and asks you, why have you guys come here? Who are you guys? Okay, uh, well, we are here on a, uh, you know, on a job. We're delivering some stuff, and, wait, is this where we were delivering to? This is the town, uh, uh, Madeline's Landing. Yes, uh, and that's, you know, that's the town you guys were trying to deliver stuff to. So, I actually don't have details on who we're delivering to, but we're on a job, and we got, like, attacked by a bunch of people when we were trying to enter the planet and we got attacked by people when he got here yeah. and uh so we're just trying to do our duty but uh, uh I, just just a recap from earlier from the very beginning of the game this is mandalon's landing and mandalon kessie is the guy who contracted you to deliver uh, a bunch of random supplies and stuff to this town uh, okay. <laughs> well, well, hold on. Let me write that name down. Oh, did, did you put that in our journal, that guy? Mandalin? Uh, you guys haven't met him yet, no. Um, okay. But, but you guys right. you guys know know of him, so I'll show him like, a little picture of you guys, because you guys talked to him before, obviously. So he set up the delivery. Hold on. <laughs> Is he some sort of, like, uh, government official, or he's, like, he's basically he's, bas he's basically the mayor of this town. That's this is good way to describe them. Okay. Okay. Can we just say we're on the job? We're on the job. For the mayor or something? Yeah, I just you guys tell her that you guys know this guy and you're doing deliveries for him. That's what he's going to say. 
we're doing a delivery for the big man himself, mm -hmm. uh, Madelong Kessie. Uh, is there any word on his uh, whereabouts? Ever like, I assume he wouldn't be happy with the situation. <sighs> Nobody really knows. Um, uh, let's see here. She she basically knows like the same amount of information that Jellic knows and uh, like whatever Jellic already told you, uh, but um, you, you guys look like you guys are really capable people to be able to come here uh, this far, uh, get past the blockade in space and get all the way here to town uh, with with you know still basically intact <laughs> you know without too much injury. Um, but I have a, uh, plan of action to kind of help liberate this town, uh, from the occupation, if you guys agree, to help me. I'll help you. <laughs> you guys want to help out, or <laughs> help liberate the town? I guess we could gain some favor with the locals. I'm not opposed, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah, and you guys are not going to get paid unless you, <laughs> you can talk to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, it's a reputation. Okay. So she, she, this is what she's going to say now. The Zunti don't know it, but a few of us have been coordinating resistance to the occupation. I've been in charge of that. We don't have all the pieces we need yet, but with your, you on our side, perhaps we do. The first step is to weaken the, the Zunti. A few target strikes around town could reduce their numbers, weaken their defenses, or both. In between, you welcome the hideout here. After that, a direct attack on the garrison can flesh out this empty and help and uh, free our prisoner. We're not equipped for that, but it looks like you might be. The rest of us round up any survivors, disarm them, and take back our settlement. So she basically telling you you guys could use this as like a hideout to rest. You recuperate, you regenerate stamina points, and all the good stuff. Yeah, like in, in between missions or, or even like right now. So. I have a series of missions around town that will help weaken the um, the, amp the empire's hold in this town and help us take it back. The first are, first are some minor ones, but then we're going to get to the big one. The first one, there is a uh, the Zanta recently sent a cadet to a settlement storehouse uh, located right here. So I'm going to put a little marker right there. Store. Is anybody else hearing Brian cut out a lot? Not a lot, but a little. No cutouts for me, but I am hearing some popping. Yeah. I just have a lot of words drop, and then I'm kind of like, I don't know what you're saying now. <laughs> I, I always hear some weird, like, twang whenever you talk. It's like, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just just Yeah, like that. I heard a weird playing there. Yeah. Yeah, a bit, like a like a yeah. stutter or noise or something. Yeah. And I hear popping when you talk too. Yeah. It's louder. It's my condition. So I look like a real stone house, but it's a storehouse. <laughs> All right. Are we gonna raid the storehouse for supplies, uh, or is there uh, something specific uh, in there? Let, let me let me finish describing. The Zanti recently said a cadet, cadet to the settlement storehouse. In a breed of fears that the colonist's good heart supply clerk, Rendell Taith, may have tent attempted some ill advice heroics. I recommend you guys kind of check him out, make sure he's okay, um, and try to help, help him out if you can. The, the next one, next mission I have for you, is the colonists have been consistently plagued by ho hobgars. You know them those little electric monkeys I talked to you earlier? Uh, mm -hmm. We keep them, um, the creatures contained in a trap at the top of a tall pour near the center of town. Uh, it's located right here. Uh, I'm just going to put a bit of H right here for Hopgar. <laughs> I'll put, I'll put Hob. Uh, that's hard to write that. Um, if you guys could open this trap, the Hopgars are sure going to cause um, trouble at the closest buildings, including the Islani garrison which is uh, located right here at the garrison. Uh, next, we have the uh, the moisture collector. The settlers don't have a well, since you're able to draw water from the fog directly with the moisture collector. 
at the east end of the settlement. The volunteer rationed water to keep colonists in line and liberating the moisture collector will boost morale. Um, but I have heard rumors of strange occurrences of moisture collector, but I don't know much more than that. So right here is the um, moisture collector. And next, um, let's see here. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, Mandolin's um, house, the administrator house, may have some valuable information in his private residence. Um, I have the uh, passcode to the personal entrance to the to his module, um, and I'll ask if you guys could take a look around there. And the administrative building is um, right here, uh, but AD for administrator. And after that, after all the other tasks are complete. Um, we recommend to attack the garrison because they'd be in a weakened state after we kind of sabotage all the other areas. Um, um, oh, forgot forgot one more thing. Uh, I heard a, a small patrol of cadets or bullying colonists, and I, re I recommend eliminating the patrol. They're located here at the cemetery. Uh, the last last I knew. Um, so we have the storehouse, the um, the hobgars, uh, release them from the cages to cause a little, little trouble, uh, liberate the moisture collector, uh, clear out the patrol in the cemetery, and check out the uh, information in the administrator's house. And then after that, we could take out the garrison. You guys can do the garrison now, but it would be really tough. And I recommend you guys handle those other situations first. And like I said before, you can use this place as a... Um, uh, as a as a hideout, hangout to uh, help restore your, uh, your restore your health between missions and whatnot. Oh, cool! Probably save the hobgars for last, right? You want to just like yeah, start first. slow, start small. I kind of want to do the moisture collector. Yeah. How loud am I, by the way? Am I okay or? You're perfect. You're perfect. Ooh. And by the way, you guys spend a couple hours here relaxing, kind of regaining your your stamina, back up to all your stamina and hit points, all back to normal. Oh, nice. Yeah. Because they have some couches and some snacks and drinks. <laughs> they literally say that in the book: snacks and drinks. That's what I want. I mean. I'm gonna get a drink. I'm enjoying drinks and snacks right now. They're delicious. So, what'd you guys like to do? Uh, I am down to Bijan's idea, the moisture collector. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm down for that too. All right. Am I a good volume too? Am I loud or quiet? Uh, uh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You're popping behind you. You sound fine. Pop. Popping? Yeah. Yeah. Do you got a pop pop shield or what do you call those things? Oh yeah, I'll get a pop shield. One second. Or right, is this better? Actually, I don't know if it's that. I think it's actually just the. Um... I think it could be like a uh, was it like a compression thing or something. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah it's what Discord. Discord. It could just be Discord. Like, I mean, it... is it still happening right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Fuck. Or it could be like a bandwidth thing. Hey, did anyone else fill out their alignment and deities? Yeah, yeah I did. Hmm. I don't know. It doesn't sound like we're going to use any of that shit, though. We might. We got a long time to play this. Yeah. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab my pop shield. All right. Let me see if you guys have any trouble making it there. One moment.
you know, it looks like you guys kind of just um, make it there relatively easily. You guys t take your time, um, try to try to like that act uh, suspicious because you you kind of you kind of have like free free rain, rain around town uh, as long as you don't like try to cause too much trouble in, in between paths. I want to take you guys off the map a second and for a second so um, I can kind of arrange the characters. Give me one moment. Oh, and by the way, the uh, ex-husband, he's still hanging out in the junk shop, basically trying to spend as much time with his ex-wife as possible to, like, get back on her good side. So he's, he's just hanging out there. Aww. <laughs> How sweet. Yeah. All right, so. Okay, so let me uh, bring, bring up the uh, information around about the moisture farm area. Where is that at? Here we go, moisture collector. Okay, so, you guys see, um, oh, I gotta put you guys back in Mac, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so you guys see the map? Yeah. See these blue things right here? Yep. Alright, so that's the moisture, moisture collector. Um, so, there isn't anything really around that you can kind of tell right now. Um, what do you guys like to do? Is this a structure in the southwest? What's going on? I, um, I mean, I can scout. Usually, I feel like it's good when I start off scouting. <laughs> I would say so. Sounds pretty like pretty much all like well, all scout. well, you guys can kind of see a like a big, big tower with with four giant tanks, um, uh, kind of collect, collecting water from from this from the, the air. Um, But you kind of notice like a uh, some some weird happenings with like the water. It seems to be like going in directions that it should not be going. <laughs> Does that kind of make sense? Like uh, it seems like to be going going against um, gravity. Okay, I'm back. I couldn't find a pot filter. <laughs> So you're so you're saying okay wait so something there's something with the tanks and the water that's some, okay can you re say it again? It just looks odd to you. The water tanks themselves, like yeah. the way they're like, physics of it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I'll, I'll try to stealth. I want to walk towards it. I want to kind of like inspect it closer. Okay. Do I just do my stealth check? Yep. Is there anything I missed? I kind of just described there's a tower with big four tanks of water, but there's something odd to them. Okay, you're, you're stealthy. Okay, and I'm just like, so I, I want to move to them and I want to kind of like inspect them further. Uh, where's my character? 
Oh, I'm not on here. Oh, wait, no, that's me. There. So, <laughs> I, I did... Okay. You're, like, the most recognizable one, too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is I'm looking for, I don't know, control panel or something. I want to see what's, what's going on. Okay, so go ahead and do a perception check. I did it. You don't really notice anything, um, but you just have a funny feeling that something's not as it should be. Okay. Uh, on my com, uh, I don't know who's who's really good with like perception and inspecting machinery. I just on my com, I, I uh, radio back that I can't detect anything, but I have a like um, essentially my my instincts are telling me there's something more. So I'm I'm looking for someone with some expert. Okay, and as and as you're talking, uh, and while you're while you're distracted, even though you're stealth, somebody kicks me in the balls. <laughs> a big uh, tower of water in in the shape of a person. It, this comes out, and just whoops, I'm in the wrong layer again. Dang it. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'll we'll come over. There we go. A tower of a, a what? A, it's like a water creature that's in the shape of a human? Yes. Mm -hmm. A water elemental? Yep. Let me see if I can find a handout for you guys. One second. I know I saw one. There's too much information here. <laughs> I'm just trying to find a picture of it. No. Oh, maybe it's in here. There we go. Okay, I kind of just shared a, gra a graphic with everybody. It's like this water creature just comes up, and it kind of just jumps on on top of uh, if Jordan B one. So okay, something jumps up. On, okay, so um. And then a battle I'm happens. Gonna, oh, but, uh, I can't just try to, like, dodge it. Okay, so then, then what? Are we just, I'm in a fight now? Yes. Let me check. Okay, yeah, it's, it's just going to attack. So, um, everybody roll for initiative. <laughs> who, who rolled first? I can't tell. <laughs> that was me, Paul. Damn, that thing looks...
All right, so uh, Paul goes first. All right. Well, we all know how this goes. <laughs> oh, fuck. I just did it. I approach with my uh, big ass dash kill, held high, get ready to attack it. Okay. That's a hit. Actually, hold on a second. I'm gonna make sh make sure. Um, let's see here. Big ass is like a weird water creature. You know that it could take normal damage. I'm gonna double check. Uh, it looks fine. It's in the shape of Bruce Lee. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's a hit. And you take you did eight damage. Yep. All right. Next. Would be Calvin. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna pop up right over here, and at the same time, I'll uh, draw my cryo gun and pop a shot off again. Okay. That's a hit. Nice. All right. So he did some damage to him. F froze part of his arm off and his arm fell off. <laughs> okay. Nice. Next will be B. John. What do you do? Uh, I guess I may as well. Yeah, I guess I'll just attack it with my knife. Because I, I can't attack it with my pistol, right? There's a minimum right, uh, range. If you do, I get an opportunity to attack you. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'll attack it with my knife. I'm just looking for it. Hold on. Uh, what, what do I roll for a uh, chance to hit? I, that's something else, right? That's not damage. It's... Just roll 1d20 plus your strength modifier. <laughs> that's a critical miss. One second. So I want to say that um, uh, you missed, but you also kind of tripped and fell over. So you, you're kind of prone on the ground now. So it's going to take you like an extra. Um, so ne next time, next time, uh, or this turn, like normally you'd be able to like attack, then move. You're not going to be able to move right now. Like your movement is standing up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, was my action already to um, attack? So I don't. I mean, yeah, the over, right? Yeah. Well, you, you can still move if you want to. Uh, and you can use movements on, on, on getting up instead of action. That's what's going to be right now. That's what I'm, I'm declaring it to be. Since, since you okay, rolled a critical one. 
I'll just use my move to stand. All right, now, um, all right. So now it's Edgar. Uh, I'm going to uh, 15 feet over. Get a better shot. And I'm gonna shoot the shoot the Bakwai with <laughs> a pistol. That's a hit. Seventeen to hit. Two piercing damage. Alright. And then Midori, I don't know if Midori gets uh is obscured, but she's in shock too. No. Sixteen to hit. Uh one piercing damage. All right, next is the water elemental, and I'm attacking um, Beige Orange to choose when to disturb, disturb the water first. How does that work? Hold on a second. Let me look, at, look up how this ability works. Okay, so I can't really do that right now. Okay, so he's going to he's going to try to pick up Bijan and slam him down to the ground. Plus four. Fifteen. What's your KAC? Fourteen. All right, so it's a hit. So it's going to be. Nine total. Okay. And that's the uh, water element that's attacked next is Matt. Okay, hey, I'm going to... Um, how many hit points do you have, Bijan? <coughs> Uh, 16. But I, that 16? Didn't, yeah, but that didn't get through my stamina points yet, so it's not a big... Oh, stamina points are like... Sounds like stamina like, is like she... It's just a, a more flexible hit points than... It's like good before stamina, hit. you can pretty much regenerate instantly oh, yeah, using your resolve points, but hit points you can't recover unless it actually takes some time to rest. Okay, so it's kind of like... Think of it as like it's kind of like body think, armor and gold thing. Yeah, like a shield where you, and you know armor. You know you gotta get past the shields first. Massive. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Cool. All right. Well then, I'm going to. Um, I'm gonna. I just want to shoot something because I don't think I've shot anything yet. So. Fuck it up, man. Mm. Um, okay, I'll shoot him. Oh, wait, is that, that Dex? To, to shoot? Yes. Uh, oh, never mind. I'm just going to run, run up and slice him. I was like... No, it's a miss. All right. Next, Paul. 
It's this thing's still alive. All right, it's got to go down. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Critical hit. Good old crit. What's your max damage? 1d12, so 12. Yep, he's dead. <laughs> 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 All right. The elemental uh, loses his form, dissolves into this basic water again, back in the, the pool. And um, since you guys defeat the water elemental and you kind of reclaim the... Uh, uh, the moisture collector back for the colony, and you guys getting 400 experience points apiece. I think these games would be perfect. I, not like I want to kick any of you guys out, but I think these games are like perfect for like three players. Like any more, and then it just becomes way too easy. <laughs> just got to figure out how to make the combat harder. Yeah. Add XP. another enemy. Yeah. I could just give this guy like 50 XP or 50, 50 points. <laughs> right, just lie to All right, so. Uh, Are there no scaling? Are there, isn't there no scaling in these in the game engine? Nope. Well, not according to these books, but I'm pretty sure I can make it. Actually, let me double check to see like what the player count is supposed to be for this game. It actually tells me. How many uh, XP was that? 400. What are we at? Two six zero five. Yep. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't really say. I'm assuming like three to five players is what these games always kind of like pick. All right, so you guys destroyed the water elemental. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you guys like to do next? Guess we got to keep investigating, right? Yeah. Let me kind of take a look. This thingy. Let me kind of put you on the big map. Other than the moisture collector, does nothing else really of interest around the area. Just just a big open plain area with just the moisture collector running. The only thing that was guarding it was the water, water elemental. So, uh, is there anything to be uh, to be learned by uh, studying the? Uh, Moisture collector. Well, you just gain a little bit more favor of the colony, or you will until you actually talk to somebody. Like nobody knows that you just cleared it out yet. <laughs> yeah, more. <laughs> yeah. We just back to it. How how long does it take to get to the junk shop from where we are? This is a small town. Think of walking around like the Ren Fair in. Um, uh, oh. I'm thinking of this town like the size of like the Ren Fair um, that we go to in Gilroy. That's uh, how I kind of picture it. Okay. Like that um, size. Well, so it just takes a few minutes just to walk from like one place to another. Next. I'm debating if I should just jog over to the junk shop and collect some fucking XP, turn that quest in. Well, you, <laughs> you, you get it right away. <laughs> uh, do we have to do anything to activate the or like the water is just working now? It's just clear and we're good, so we can go. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's just no weird creature blocking people from trying to use it. <laughs> okay, who do we let know then? Uh, I mean, we may as well go to the junk shop later. Something, someone we're looking for at the storehouse? Yeah, okay, for a minute. Yeah, you got the storehouse mm -hmm. here to look at, you got the cemetery, and you got the administrative office. Field up? I say we should go to the cemetery and then loop around, hit the storehouse. There are some baddies there. Yeah, there's uh she told you that the um there's a group of three three cadet patrols uh patrolling the settlement, bullying different colonists, uh, and she suggested you guys eliminate them. Do you think She says the yeah. uh the route takes near this uh, settlement cemetery, which provides ample places to hide and it's a good place to set up an ambush. Sounds like Bijan's ready to go ambush somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, can I rest before we head out? Yeah. We rested it uh, before we came here. But well, I mean, I took it. got hurt. So, I need to recover my stamina. How does that work? Um, since you guys... 
since you guys kind of have like in a big open area and like in the middle of a siege town, you guys can't really find that many places to rest. That's from, that's why she guys told you you guys need to rest. You should come to the junk shop. Oh, okay. I mean, fine. The junk that's shop's fine. like right there. I have right? plenty of health. Let's right just there. we can just. I know you got power bombed by Water Bruce Lee. So. <laughs> I'm still good. I still have three stamina points left. All right, let me. Uh, so you guys want to go to cemetery? Yeah, let's go to cemetery. Okay. All right, let, let me uh, bring up the information about it. One moment. Took me a while to find the rest resting rules, but uh, if you take a ten minute rest and spend one resolve point, you can regain all your stamina points. And if you have a full night's rest, you regain all your stamina and one HP per character level. Which means right now, if we take HP damage, a long rest will heal two HP. How do we know how much resolve we have? It says in your character. Uh, you usually probably have one or two points. It's your primary stat plus half your character level. So whatever your primary stat plus one is. There we go. So it's not the primary stat modifier. It's literally the primary stat. Oh, modifier. no, the, the, the modifier. Okay. How do you recover resolve? By resting, I believe. Let me double check. Because if that's the case, then I'll just, yeah, I'll spend the one resolve to heal my, my... Up to once per day, characters can regain any spent resolve points by getting a full eight hours of uninterrupted, uninterrupted rest. Okay. So it's essentially the session that we regain our... Oh. You said one or all result. Can regain up to once per day. Any characters can regain any spent resolve points by gain, gotcha. getting a full eight hours under to sleep. Okay. I'll subtract one resolve. To but I think if your resolve points are gone, you instantly die when you hit zero hit points. If you uh, if you have like one or two resolve points, and then you like you ran out of stamina and hit points, uh, you uh. You do like a saving throw uh, each um, round that you have a resolve point for. They kind of still kind of keep you alive until someone's able to heal. You. Somebody's able to kind of give you a hand. But if you have zero resolve points and you hit zero hit points, you're dead. Paul, back or are we just are we starting the cemetery? All right, guys, ready? Okay. Uh, let me get you guys in position. I want to take you guys off the map. So you guys won't see stuff you're not supposed to see. <laughs> so we're, like, sneaking up, right? Yeah. I'm back. I'm just reading really quick one moment. there so this, uh, the colony cemetery is not a not large consistent only of a few headstones and a heavy wrought iron fence and a clearing hacked out from the forest a stone plinth near the center of the area 
is carved with a list of names. A gravel trail near the cemetery is covered with fallen leaves, and a thick mist surrounds the grave. And it's pretty foggy here. Uh, you, you guys kind of like um, got here, nobody was around, and you guys started to hit behind the a fence. Um, and the fence is really, really tall uh, and really, really big. And um, 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 anybody w wanted to use it to, to do cover as well as uh, do stealth checks, you get a plus four to, the, to that skill. Go ahead. One second, I'm trying to see what you guys see. So you guys are in the cemetery, and like right here, it's like the uh, the fence. You guys can kind of. All right, you guys can see something until you guys walk out of it because it's the gate right there. But as you guys are uh, hanging out, you start to hear some footsteps walk walk by. What would you guys like to do? I'm in the elf. Quick, hold on, hold on one second. I'll be right back. Elf. Okay. What else? What everybody else going to do? I have this ability uh, called spell cache that I'm going to just activate in action. Uh, and basically lets me cast um, a, one, any spell once per day. And... What did you say again? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear you. I'm going to activate uh, an ability I have called spell cache that lets me cast a spell once per day. Okay. But I'm going to make sure I'm not in front of everybody. Okay. But you hear foot, footsteps walking back and forth from the side of this gate. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the delivery driver came here right at that moment. <laughs> Who has a uh, good stealth to investigate? Wait, are we all just hiding from people who are arriving? I still yeah, don't know yeah, who it is. I don't have good stealth. Uh, I'll try this. Yeah. Um, Dory's a fucking pro. And she has this uh, ability uh, or uh, a mod called Reactive Camouflage. So, uh, if she spends one round to hide, um, her paint changes color like a chameleon. And she <laughs> gets uh, awesome. uh, plus 10 to stealth while not moving. That's awesome. So all you guys just want to sit here and just hide? That's all you guys want to do? Oh, no, oh I hide behind a tombstone. Okay. People are waiting for everybody. Oh. Yeah, I'll move up a little closer because I want to see who it is. Yeah, and I just told uh, Midori to follow Jorn. I'm going to activate the motion badge that I got from a couple encounters with Pat. Okay. Boop. As you guys are kind of just hiding, you kind of hear the voices getting further and further away. Right. Okay, I'll start um, walking towards them. Okay, so you gonna you gonna want to try to kind of peek through the through the gate. Yeah. Oh sure, yeah. Uh, run like a perception test. I 
I can't tell who's rolling for what. <laughs> hey. That was me. me again. Am, am I rolling two or just one person? No, we can have two people, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who, who's yeah. right here? Who's right here peeking? At the gate? Because right here you I'm see absolutely oh. right right here. All it is is a gigantic wall, and you can't see anything. Right here is the door, the door and the gate. <laughs> right, right here, you, you just, you just right next to the biggest wall ever, so you can't really. Like, <laughs> like, like is Literally, this is just like a Diablo map. Yeah, right here is the gate. We only thing you can really see through right here. Um, so the, the person right in front of the gate, do a perception check. Who, who I just the, rolled seven for that. Okay, you don't really, you just see some. Some uh, some feet. That's all mm -hmm. you can really tell through the gate. You can't really tell more than that. All right. Uh, I rolled two. The sixteen was lean. Okay. You, however, can kind of, from your perspective, have a better view, and you see three guards. Um, uh, I'm actually just going to put you like right out of here temporarily, so you can kind of see through the gate. You see uh, three guards walking in this direction, walking away from the gate, because they were walking this way as the footsteps, you know, getting louder, and they're, they're just walking past the cemetery on their patrol. So they don't, they have their backs towards you right now, and they're walking in this direction. Yeah, I can't, I still can't see what you're talking about, but I think I get what you're saying. I mean, they were walking towards the gate, and now they're just walking away. Uh, you can't see? Hold on a second. Uh, no, that doesn't give me vision. Let me double check. Let me rejoin as a player. I see absolutely everything, so I don't know when if the uh, dynamic lighting messes up. Yeah, it's it's always we only have view of the cemetery. Okay, one second. Dynamic lighting. Yeah. <laughs> so you still don't see anything, Bijan? Yeah, so. What about you? Uh, oh no, I, yeah, now. I see it. Yeah, no, I okay, so Bijan doesn't have the lighting thing set up. Let me fix that. I see. I can see too. So I want to pitch you back. It's a test. What do you see, Beyond? Do you still see stuff? Yep, I okay. see it. Okay, so you basically three, see three cadets walking in this direction. Okay, cool. What do you guys want to do? You guys have to drop on them right now. Uh, I want to bust out. Well, okay. Do we want to attack or detain or what? No mercy. Well, she told yeah. you to eliminate the patrol. Murder, All right, dude. I'm gonna. I want to pop out and use uh, the spell that I read, which was energy ray. Okay. <laughs> so, pop out and do it. All right. I need to read. I don't know if you want to get uh, that close. Is it you have to be like touching them or? No, I don't. But I can't see anything. I'm trying to move oh. myself out. Oh, tonight. sorry. You must not have. Enough. Okay, there we go. No, 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 no. no. Move, move, move back. Whoever just moved that character. No, 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 no. The Midori, move, move yourself back. Everybody, stop moving your tokens. Hold on, let me fix it. Stop p moving your tokens. Okay, so you see nothing right now, right? Nope. Okay, let me see if I can fix it. All right. Uh, what about now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good area to pop out on. Um, for some reason, it lets me uh, pick the type of damage I want to do. Okay. So I'll do, um, I'll, I'll pick acid damage, and it's just a 1d3. What? 1d4. One second. What's the spell you used again? Energy ray. All right, let's see here. Close range. 
It says you make you must make a ranged attack against my EAC. D did you roll that already, or? Did you... Uh, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, you have to roll that first. All right. One d twenty plus dexterity. Thirteen. It's a hit. <laughs> so three damage against uh, this one. Yeah, the one closest to me because it's a pretty close range. All right, so they're pretty stunned. Like, what the hell is that? And these guys burning. Um, I have to look up and see exactly what acid does. Unless you have a description. Uh, I could pull it up real quick. Uh, it may deal damage over time. That's really helpful. This glossary says acid damage. This is a type of energy damage. <laughs> Don't yeah. mean nothing. Do we like roll for an initiative now? Yes. And you guys, you guys have a surprise attack, so I don't really roll. I'm just going last. But you guys roll for you guys' order. The hidden truth will have. I think Turtle had tip. Huh? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Paul, you go first. <clears throat> I go first with the 12. All right. I thought you do. Am I right? Uh, the third, no, I'm sorry, um, uh, 10, 11, 12, yeah, you're right, you go first. This thing must die. Uh, Brian. Yes. When I hit it with uh, my energy raid, did did I notice any type of interesting things happening to like their armor or anything? I'm still not 100 percent sure what acid does. <laughs> I'm looking it up. I nobody really says anything. <laughs> does it say anything on page 264? I don't have a book. Let me grab the book. What's that? Right. What page you I'm at? What, what page? 264. Is anybody at Turkish Kitchen? Uh, never mind. It, it only talks about energy resistance. One second, Paul. Sorry. Acid damage, page 169. Matt, what did you say? I said, has anybody had Turkish Kitchen on Shattuck? Oh, no, I've never heard of it. Is Fuck. it new? I just tried it for the first time, and right now I got delivery. It's really fucking good. It's 
Still doesn't say anything. It just says I... damaged up by corrosive substance and effects. Yeah. I think it, that means it's up to you. Yeah. Like, if you want it to deal damage over time, something like that. Yeah. Well, they have pretty... Um, they're wearing, like, some plate armor, so it's, it doesn't really impact them that much right now. If they were wearing, like, leather armor, I'd say, you know, that <laughs> could be a problem. <laughs> okay, Paul, I'm sorry. What'd you roll? I got a 10. I'm assuming that's a miss. That's a miss, yeah. Next would be Edgar. Mm. I'm going to um okay. move here and story is gonna move out. Dory's just going to freaking climb the wall and go up there. She has 20 climb. Alright. So you just climbed, that was it, or...? Movement. So you're just right here climbing. <laughs> the, the door. No, uh, uh, Midori's climbing. Oh. Okay. Then I I came from all the way over here. So. Okay. These gates are open, by the way. Oh, I can see this. Uh. Yeah, I just don't know how to open it up. So just, pre just pretend you're there, but you're. Uh, pretend you're here, but you're really there. The gates are wide open though. I just don't. I just don't know how to turn that off. <laughs> can we just oh, I, I can, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then I'll. I'll take a shot. Uh, like Paul. Like, what happened? He is turtle snuck through. He did a spell, and then Paul like Argh! just charges and busts down the gates. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Sounds right. I just don't know how to turn off the lighting effects. 13 versus KAC. KAC. Let me check. Um, it's a hit. Uh, five piercing damage. Uh, to the one that got damaged before? Uh, yes, the closest one. All right. He's hurting, but he's still alive. What next? That's all for me. Next would be Matt. Matt or Calvin. Both yeah. got 10. Yeah, either or. Yeah. You want to go first, Calvin? Or? No, you can go first. It's all good. I already got my surprise energy right off. Four. Five. Can I attack him from, like, is this melee distance? <clears throat> Where are you? Right. Yeah, yeah, it, it, like it, it, in a this um square. Any of the, any any of that's any of these spots that we we'll be able to hit him. Okay. Sweet muscle ward. Ooh, nice! Finally. Um, got a. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, I hit him in his probably. So, seven slicing damage. I assume. My long sword. Seven damage against one. Am I too loud? No, you're fine. Okay. He, he is a dead guy. You killed one. <laughs> I hold up the top half of his body and show it to the other ones.
So who's next? Me. Um, I'm literally. Oh, actually, yeah, I had one skill that. I, let me check my sheet. Yeah, as as my move action, I'm gonna ban my last uh, or my first spell slot to make my attack get a bonus attack roll. Oh, that's your roll. I'm sorry. Yeah, still loving. Uh, you think to pop up. I, I literally don't see that. See you guys even roll. Let me see if I can turn on um, dice so I can actually tell when you guys roll. Um, yeah, I think I can do that for other people. That sucks. Okay, so you rolled an eleven. Eleven against what? Yeah. Energy or kinetic? Energy. It's a, it's a miss. Damn it. No, I'm, I take it back as a hit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Energy is 11, kinetics 13. Sweet. Um, okay. So, because. Okay. I'm gonna do one. <laughs> Sorry. Boo four. Against uh, this guy. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Next is B John. Okay, so uh, I'll start by moving towards, uh, I'll move here behind Turtle, and then I will fire, let's see, this is still my range, right, with a pistol? I'm using my, to fire at the second guy. Uh, five, ten, yeah. What's your range of your gun? Uh, let me find it. Tactical pistol is thirty feet. Oh, you're good. Yeah, you can you can see that measurement, right? Yes, it was twenty five foot feet. Okay. I downloaded this uh, little point and click adventure game that came out a couple days ago called um what was it called? Virtual verse is like a pixelated cyberpunk point and click game. It's pretty fun so far. Nice. How much was it? It was like fifteen bucks. Oh, cool. I bought it on good old games. I don't know if it's out of anything else. I think just PCs for now. The range is fifty, so I definitely am in range. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll just fire it and then. So already twenty oh. plus dex. Have you guys been keeping track of your bullets and charges? Uh, not really, but I've been I'm stocked up. Yeah. Well under the limit. Okay, that's my. That's definitely that's my... it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then... Two damage, I think. Yep. All right. So now it's the cadets' turns. Luckily for me, none of you guys are right next to them, so they can, it can move away a little bit without provoking an opportunity of attack. So he's kind of just want to move right there, and um, he's attacking the the closest person 
uh, which is going to be Gorse. And he's going to be using his rifle. Bring it on, little bitch. Plus his dexterity, plus two. Six. So that shot went wide, I'm assuming. I'm assuming you're thinking What's your six. Armor? <laughs> but I get the kinetic or kinetic. Uh yeah, no, I'm twelve. Alright, so the other ones are gonna do the exact same thing. You rolled an eight. <laughs> so they both miss. <laughs> and that's your turn. Regular stormtroopers. Man. Uh, it's going to be a tough. I don't think they're going to make it. <laughs> After this, we should... Uh, or I'll, I mean, I don't know if you want... I'll, I'll look up... I'm sure people have run into this, like problem of too many people making content easy. I'm sure someone maybe has like a scale that they could where there's like, oh yeah, I do 20% extra. There you go. That was good. What did you do? You added like five of them? I just, I just said copy and paste. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, next, next, next game we play, I'll kind of do some fake, um, fake turns, and if it's like too way too easy, maybe I'll like add one more character or increase the points, but like just a few. I think I would. Be... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I think it'd be funner if you just had more people like clones or something. Yeah. Well, so it you have to be careful because if you have more characters, then that's more front loading damage, so they could kill us easier. But if you do more health, then we. They do more damage overall over the course of the fight, and it takes longer to beat them. So it's just like, how do you want to bounce? Right. Okay, so this thing shows up and blasts everybody out of the sky. All right. So now it's um, oh, Paul's turn. I'm sorry. All right. Chum. This one has damage on them already. Having a tough day. <laughs> it is a thick fog outside. And maybe this uh, cold air is slowing you down. <laughs> you are a lizard. You're That's, That's our cold blooded, yes. Next is Edgar. It just makes me think of the Chappelle show skit every time I hear someone say cold blooded. <laughs> cold blooded. <laughs> I'll be right back. One second. Okay, I'm back. You rolled a five. Okay. Sorry, attacks are twenty. Piercing damage. 
from a more Midori. I guess this guy? Top fans. Yeah. On that sound boat. That boat was on. Still alive. I use the rest of my movement and just get up closer. That's it. So what are you doing, Matt? Matt, your uh, mic's off. Yeah, no. Typed it. <laughs> He's gone insane. So you actually, well, so you actually moved up next to one of them. What are you doing there? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I thought I. Sorry, my bad. Uh, one, two, three. All right. So which one are you talking? This one? Uh, the one to my right. This one? Or wait, wait no, like this one's Paul's attack. Yeah. The and top Paul one is the, this one is the weakened one. This one's the fully full strength one. The weakened one. All right. And you got a four? Four. Slicing damage. And you slice his head off. <laughs> Next would be Calvin and then Bijan. Yeah. Um, I want to run up right in front of that guy and... Uh, Try to shoot him in the face. Damn it. Wait, you, you shot at him with like a gun? Yeah. Okay, you do realize when you're right next to somebody and use a gun, I get an opportunity to attack you back. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah, we talked about it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so I get All right, a, go ahead. All right, so I get an opportunity to use my survival knife. I hope I don't get. I ain't got plenty of health first in. Six. Against kinetic. So uh -huh. you so you missed me with your gun point blank range, and I missed you with my knife point blank range. <laughs> yeah, I've got a fifteen. All right. Next will be uh, Bijan. Okay, shoot with my pistol again. So. Uh... Is that, oh, so there's two dead, so just that the last one. Uh, it's a 50 range, so I'm pretty sure he's dead. Okay. Uh, so you actually hit? Yeah, the attack roll was 22, and then the, the damage roll was 4. All right. Okay, so you kill two of his comrades, and this, you see this, this one particular cadet starts to panic. He pulls out his comm and yells out for help, you know, sending a, um, send for backup immediately, we need help. And instead of using his traditional action, he tends to run away. Um, and I do know he's going to take opportunity attack, this is just part of the story, he's, he's trying to run away from you guys because he thinks it's over his head. So. He tries to move his space, um, and 
Paul and Gorse and Twirtle both get an opportunity to attack. This is a start with, a start with Paul. So he, he alerted the... Um, Sorry. He was able to call for help via his comm unit, asking for help wow. on this, at this location, and uh, he started to run away. Oh, man, this is where mobility comes in, dude. All right, well, I've got to chase him, right? He's well, still standing right there. Well, as I, as I was saying before, he moved, and that gives all three of you guys an opportunity to attack. So let's start with Paul. Go, go. I see. Yeah. He's trying to run away. That is a miss. <laughs> Uh, awful chili. <laughs> you got a plus five too. That's crazy. <laughs> Next, let's start with Gorse. Use your melee weapon. That's a hit. Ouch. But he's still alive. What does AC stand for? What? What does AC stand for? Armor, Armor class. class. Uh, next is, Brian, can I kill him? No, he's still alive. He, he just took some damage though. Next would be Turtle. Use your your opportunity attack. After I cut him, I say, snitches get stitches, punk. Fuck, I just left on accident. Sorry. Right. Is an eight a miss? It's a miss. Ah. But he tries he tries to move again. It gives you one more opportunity to attack. Twelve. That is a miss. Jesus. That means he uh, successfully runs away. <laughs> so you have an escape guard, and um, uh, he alerted the uh, security forces about your presence. Well, looks like I'm moving over here. For future reference, Brian, I had to use my melee weapon. I couldn't cast a spell on that guy. Um, I don't know. I think you need... For that. I just realized if, if that's possible, I probably should have just cast a spell on that guy. But say a lot. Let me look it up real quick. Heck of opportunity. So, our attack of opportunity when an opponent in space threatens you with a range attack, you get a reaction to make a melee attack. Um, when you threaten a space and the opponent moves out of the space in any other way other than a guard step or withdraw action, you can use your reaction, reaction to make a melee attack. So, no, it's a melee. You can't do a spell. Okay, cool. So let me see what happens now. Okay. So you hear like a little uh, alert go off in the in the distance, saying there could be some um, some unknown hostiles in the area. You know, be prepared. Um, in the distance, you can, in, up in the sky, up behind the sky, you can see like a little security robots just kind of flying around. But mm -hmm. they, they don't they don't spot you just yet though. Is there a way to fuck with them, hack them, or disable them or anything?
Does a Technomancer have that ability, maybe? <laughs> let me, let me, I'm reading the this scenario really quick. Can I what? Sorry. Like uh, hack them or disable them or something. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Can't do that. Well, I know in the in the check, Calvin, you had oh, quick scan robot influence in there. You didn't end up choosing robot influence. No. Okay. Not that you were aware of right now. And by the way, um, you guys each gain um, four hundred experience points for defeating the two cadets. Yeah. Well, just a little bit more experience, we level up. Really close. It would have been 600, but you let one go away. <laughs> so right now, you can kind of just hear some things kind of flying in the distance. Uh, let me kind of... Um, uh, I want to take you off of the map really quick. How much XP was that, you said? Sorry. For, uh, how much did I say? 100. So we should be at yeah, 3,005. Thanks. Okay, so you you guys are just basically um, next to the graveyard right now. Was a high alert um, security staff in this in the in the the town. What would you guys like to do now? Oh, I want to put a little. Uh, Red X of area, so you guys kind of like visited. Do our objectives change or anything? Were there other submissions for us to do? Like, yeah. Does it just make those harder? Yeah, there's this one, there's this one, and there's this one. And the, the big garrison. We're short on time. We should check out the administrative building. Okay. Go on Madelon. All right. We like uh, keep to the outskirts. Where's where's that at on this map? Area K. Okay. Okay, so I want everybody to do a um, stealth check to see if you guys could get to the administrative office being un undetected. Everybody has to pass. Yeah. Of course, the giant lizard. <laughs> Just elaborating and slow. Let's go weather. Come on, Edgar, you got this. Stealth is not very good. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, unfortunately, Paul and Edgar are really loud and not just laughing, talking, talking about. You know, these stories they had, you know, growing up as kids, while they were supposed to be stealthy. And they alerted the attention of the, uh, whoops, 
of the uh, land the robots. Why is it grabbing that thing? Did I miss I'll be right back. the uh, picture of the robots. <laughs> I, started, I started eating you guys' a journal. Oh, sweet. I, for, I, for, I totally forgot. I got these built-in character sheets. So I could just do things like if I want to roll um, melee, I could just do that. <laughs> oh, one. <laughs> I would have I would have missed. <laughs> All right. Um, so... So the robots were just flying, flying around looking for you, and you guys made a lot of noise um, and able to identify you. And the swoop, they both robots just swooped down to your guys' levels and just, just start attacking. Everybody has to roll for initiative. What? I actually have to go in the book? This guide, hold on, it's going to take a second. This handout expects me to own the Starfinder Alien Archive book, which I do not own. So I have to look up the specs of these guys online real quick. Just give me a moment. Use that uh, website um, that I linked in the chat. I'm pretty sure I can find him in just a second. Right. And I found it. Here we go. Because they're equal to robot security observer class. I just need I just needed their hit points and specs and stuff like that. And I'm ready to go. So uh, I didn't roll for initiative. One second. Plus what's your dexterity? Oh, four. Wow. Haha, <laughs> 24, I'm going first. <laughs> so, what everybody else roll? Um, Paul, oh, uh, Paul got close, but just not close enough. And then Calvin, 20, Maker, 18. Also, oh, you, already, you already did that, cool. And, yeah. All right, let's see what these guys' abilities are.
We'll kind of like spread you guys out a little bit more. Does that thing say house? I don't, Is that? I don't, I don't know who did that. Yeah, who did that? The house. <laughs> I have no idea who did that. Speak up. Did what? I could just delete it. <laughs> okay. So this one's going to fly over. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, well, how does this work? One, two, three, four, five. Um, Actually, no, they're not in range. <laughs> uh, what he wants to do is not quite in range yet. So he's going to fire a pulse caster pistol energy against Turtle, because he's the closest. Against me? Yep, main tank. Twenty one kind of energy twenty one against energy class. EAC Damn. fourteen. Four damage and all lethal. So it's so it just took out four stamina. Got it. And next will be one, two, three. Whoops. And what tool did you guys use to uh, do the measuring? It's uh, the fourth icon on the left. I have, different, I have more icons than you. Uh, what's what's it look like? With the circle with a ruler sticking out of it. Okay. All right, so he's able to hit turtle. So thirteen energy. Fourteen. Is it, is it miss? Yeah. Okay. And that's my action. That's Paul. Yep. Smash. <laughs> Miss. These Sad. guys are these guys are pretty tough, by the way. Next, Calvin. My turn. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll activate my last. Um, what is that thing called? My last magic hacks to cast an empowered weapon. Um, so I spend it all of my first level spell slots and. Text. I'm going to attack the closest one. And by, Paul tried to hit. and by the way, is anybody good in robotics or computers? Uh, yeah, I'm good at computers and engineering. What's your What's your level? Uh, well, I have two ranks in computer and engineering. What's What's bonus. What's What's your bonus? It's like plus eight or something. Okay, so you know that these guys, but just by looking at them, plus nine, they're vulnerable to critical hits and they're vulnerable to electricity. Just a little, just a little. You know, knowledge about these about robots. Fucking awesome! I'm about to blast it with my gat. Get plus four. Twenty-two. 
That's a hit. Think four. Guess this one? Yep. I don't even think I'm close enough to hit the other one. Yeah. Okay. Who's next? Edgar? Turtle. Oh, he's finished? Okay. Uh... But don't forget, Paul, uh, there's other actions you could do, just, just normal, like, run up and swing your axe. You could do things like do a bull rush and actually tackle things, bring them down to the ground and stuff like that. If, That's right. I forgot yeah. about that chart. That has yeah. All that yeah. Right there. Just give you more options. <laughs> that way I picture a big lizard guy trying to pull these things out of the sky and throw it against the ground. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to shoot the one that's on Paul. Energy or physical? Kinetic. That is a hit. Sing. And then, uh, huh. Or, what are these, uh, is this like a wall or it's just like an obstacle? It's a, this it looks like this is a big flower pot. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. All right, is it is it blacked out for you guys? I know you see it. Oh. This one. It looks like uh, it's just a flower pot to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming it's gonna take like an extra movement to jump jump over it. Like for example, this would be like um, uh, one space, one two three four like that. Like just two movements instead of one. Dory's gonna climb on that climb on that stuff. That's it. Next is Matt. Hey back one second, I'm gonna grab a drink. I'm just swinging my sword. <laughs> okay, I'm back. What happened? Thirteen kinetic. Miss. Yep. Next. Uh oh, is it my turn to attack? Yep. Okay, so Uh, which one has everybody been attacking? The one everybody's close to? I'll attack the nearest one. Okay. That's a hit. <laughs> that was almost a critical, too. You could have almost done six damage. That's it for me. All right. Let's see if I move here. Okay. So this guy is going to move here. 
and he's gonna throw he's gonna throw a sticky bomb grenade right here uh, at this uh, at this square and what that's gonna do is going to if I hit anybody in these squares will, will be affected by it let's see though but if I'm able to throw it in that area if I miss I still th I still throw the grenade it'll just be you know like uh, it'll just be one then I'll roll like a um, uh, 1d 8 or 10 I forget we have to look it up then it'd be either like one two three it'd be one of these th these spaces oh I see yeah so we'll see if I'm able to hit the space I want to hit first you know it's a range attack Plus, what's my dexterity again? Four. That's right. Ha <laughs> ha! Dang, I missed. So now it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So. Let me double check that. Let me look at You it just roll a D8 as a center square. It doesn't count. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. So, it lands here, which basically means it affects nobody. Phew. <laughs> <That's wrong. laughs> Actually, I don't know if it's going to be right here or like right here. Actually, you know, I think it's. I'm sorry. I think it's going to affect uh, these 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 spaces instead because it kind of goes off where I originally wanted to throw it at. So still nobody's affected. <laughs> so that guy, that was that guy's turn. Now I want to do the other one, which will be. Just using his. Um, Um, it's going to do a melee attack. Slam. Against Paul. And he rolled a four, so nothing. So both my, my guys did pretty much nothing that round. Now it's back to Paul. Is that a uh, kinetic I'm assuming? It's a miss. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> it, it, it's a 15 to roll. Anything else you could do, Paul? Uh, no, I'll just maintain my position here. All right, next would be Calvin. Hey, sorry, I'm back, dude. Yeah. Um, so. I have a question. When I roll dice, do you see a little dice icon roll on the screen? No. Is it just for you? Uh, I think I disabled that in the option. Oh, yeah. There you can. Uh, there's something called enable 3D. Yeah, I enable it for me. I'm just curious if it's just for you guys because I like having it on. Otherwise, I get kind of confused when you guys roll. <laughs> I just I just see a little pop up, and when it happens like five at a time, I don't know who, who rolls what. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> enable 3D dice. Well, I'll turn it on right now. And see that. Yeah, I'm just curious what happens. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. So. I don't know if it, if it just shows only my rolls or it only shows like you know, 
Only your I would think if it's just for your stuff. Or it's just for you have, I think it's just for. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna roll a dice. What happens? If you turn it on, do you see that? I just thought. I yeah. See it just, now. Okay. Yeah, that's what I see every time I roll. <laughs> So you rolled an 18? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a hit. I'm sorry. (laughs) Easy 1d4. Against this one? Uh, the the weakest one. Alright. Right. Still kicking. <laughs> Next will be Edgar. I'm going to take a shot at uh, the one that's on the bow. Same one. Uh, Fifteen versus KC. That's a hit. Five piercing. Nice. He's hurting, but he's still alive. Just barely. A lot of smoke kind of coming off that little robot. Only one thruster's firing. <laughs> Just sit. So you rolled a 19, Matt? My, my bad, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to press enter yet. Yeah. Uh, 19, I assume that hits, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, it, it Were hit. you done, Edgar? I didn't mean to cut your... You, you, you. That was it. You, yeah. What's up? Yeah, I'm done. Brian, what are you saying? You definitely, uh, 19th definitely hit it against anything. All right, cool. And one robot. Slice. One, uh, robot falls onto the ground and a pile of rubber, rubble yeah. explodes. Next is uh, Bijan. Okay, aiming at the uh, last one. What, what'd you say? Rolling at the last one. I'm rolling to oh, sorry, shooting at the last one. All right. That's definitely a hit. That's my turn. All right, next will be the robot. He's going to fire a stick grenade again right there. Plus. He succeeds and throws a sticky bomb right there. And it has an entangled effect in the area for 2d4 rounds. So for three rounds, Gorse and Paul are entangled. And entangled so means... Um, you move at half speed, you cannot run or charge, and you take a minus two penalty to your AC, attack roll, reflex save, basically minus two with just about any roll for three rounds, and you move at half speed. So instead of like 30 speed, you have 15 speed right now. 
and uh, it's going to move just a little bit out of the way. <laughs> so I want to put a little icon for um, now, like a little blue marker. All right, that's the robot's, robot's turn. Next would be Paul's turn. Well, I'm still entangled, so I'm guessing he can't move, so I'm going to uh, swap to my rifle. You can, you, can, you can move. You just move at half speed, so like each move and takes up like a 10 speed. I see. Yeah. But yeah, you could do your rifle. You just have a minus two to your, your check. Actually, I've got just enough movement to be able to. Minus two, minus two, that would be 13, so that's a miss. <laughs> Regular, that you would, normally you would have hit me. <laughs> because the armor class is 15. <laughs> but you get a minus two because of the, uh, the entangled thing. Right, right. Someday, Paul, someday you, you'll swing out some points. <laughs> Just not this session. Next to be Calvin. Hmm. Okay. Move up here. Actually, I'll move here and then uh, try to shoot this fucker. Seventeen. That's a hit. Do I not get any attack bonus? Oh, I do. Sick. I really heard it. But still kicking. Jesus. Spoken a little bit. <laughs> I said these are tougher than normal. Uh, next would be uh, Edgar. Uh, take two shots like normal. Uh, 14 versus KC. That's a miss. Miss. <laughs> a miss. Alright. Uh,. And I'm just gonna uh, get on Mount Midori. Oh. All right. That's it. Next would be uh, Matt. Don't forget to add minus two to your roll. Minus two? Yep. Minus two. Nice. So it'll be 15, it's still a hit. And I said to do minus two, you oh, forgot to do know. that. I took two off, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay, I see what you did. It's a hit then, yeah. Yeah. Dang. So I thought you were going to do, you know, like 15 plus two minus two. <laughs> Or, you know, it really makes so. But he's still alive. I think it's a crappy roll <laughs> for damage. B. John, finally do something. But I've been doing things. Yeah, it just feels like you haven't been doing anything for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because you've been the most quiet. Uh, okay. I mean, I go last. So yeah. That's why. I... That's probably why, yeah. 
Uh, oh, okay. Oh, move. that's why you're still in range of all these weapons, so you're just taking back yeah. to fire at me. Uh, I'll move up a couple. And then I will fire at it. Uh, the last. I don't know if it's a hit, but that's those are my rolls. If it's a hit, it's a miss. Okay. Next is the robot firing at Paul. And uh, this is the the uh, second round, so you got one more round after this. And it's a uh, minus two penalty to your AC as well. Let's keep that in mind. And I'm going to do a melee attack. I'll do that a plus two to my, my roll. It missed. <laughs> but I missed you, Paul. And, uh... And um, that's the end of my turn. I'm not going to try to run because I gave you an opportunity to attack. So next is you, you Paul. All right. You know, I think Gorse can give you a like a helping hand. Um, let me look up the rule for that really quick. Oh, oh, that's your roll. <laughs> Good enough. Yeah. yeah. All right. So he's still alive. Barely though. He's on fire. Next. B. John? Oh, I'm sorry, not B. John. Calvin? Yeah. Who's that in front of me? Who's this? Where's? Yeah. Is this guy on its last leg? It's 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 hurting really bad. Okay. Is it? Very limp roll. But that's enough. Plus four, that's really nice. Yep. <laughs> they were not able to hold you guys down and um, call for backup. If I was able to entangle all of you guys, more soldiers would have showed up. <laughs> but I only got two of you guys. This ends the round. You guys gain 800 experience points each Hell for destroying yeah. the robots since they're a little tougher than normal. Um, and you guys make your way back, finish the administrative building. You guys want to take time to look at your guys' sheets or. There's 800 XP. Welcome to Maybe, I mean, do we want to use time now to upgrade two characters, or should we do that in the downtime between? Well, if you want to take a quick peek, it may get some abilities that could be useful right now, unless, unless you guys really only want to wait. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. 
At what point do we get uh, third level? I'm looking it up right now. Uh, oh, never mind. Sorry. At least for this session, I think we don't really screw up. At least for this, can you guys hear me? my microphone. At least for this session, we probably don't need to be stronger. Right? You gain, you gain um, th uh, thirty-three hundred experience points. You gain third level, and you get a second feat. All right. Yeah. Just reading the feats alone will take me a good long while. All right. So just hold up. Plus, we're already like fucking stopping everything right now. What what hit points are we at? Right. I mean, what experience points are we at right now? Thirty-eight oh five. Okay, so we, we, if you want to take a feat now, go for it. Just add it on. But if you don't want to worry about it right now, we could just keep going. Um, I'm gonna do it right now. And uh, do you guys want to keep going to the ministry buildings, or you guys want to go back to the junk house, or? Uh, what were we supposed yeah. to do around the administrator buildings? I mean, I don't mind going to the admin buildings. She, because, just, uh, she just wants you to poke around to see if you can find any useful information. That's all she, that's all she told you. I don't I'm mind looking exploring. for Madelon. We could get money, get paid. <laughs> find a safe <laughs> and find 4,000 credits. And, okay, I got paid. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to check out the administrator building. Oh, I do want to take note that you guys are getting a level. Uh, this is something that it, the book says we sh I should remind you guys. Uh, when you guys um, gain a level, you, you, you learn, you have the opportunity to learn as many languages as you are level like when you're first language your first level you only really know one language when you second level you have an opportunity to learn another language um in abrita before she you guys left her compound the first time the junkyard she she has some intercepted broadcast files and on data pads uh you guys have her opportunity to listen to to help learn the islanti language a little bit more uh so yeah. So if you want to invest like a skill rank in culture, you have an opportunity to learn the language. I have a, just to let you know, I have a first level spell called Comprehend Languages, so I can understand all of them. Okay. And mystics have a spell, a second level spell called Augury that just says learn whether an action will be good or bad pretty cool yeah that is really good So what do you guys want to do right now? I mean, if Paul has to stop at around 9, we should probably just go right now because we only have... Like, yeah, I'll be wrapping up soon. We can so just, probably uh, just do one more thing. Explore the administrative building and then we can... Yeah, let's do that. Okay, you could do that. But FYI, this administrative building doesn't have a map. It's just like pure role-playing stuff. Okay, cool. that's fine. I'll just kind of move this on a tiny map. So we're all hanging out by the um, 
administrative building. Menlo's private residence consists of two connected prefabricated modules rather than just one, although there is a separate entrance to each module. One of the entrances is painted with an elaborate cityscape in gold with the words, all are welcome before the master of the first vault, while the other has a small sign reading, private business. Each entrance has a key bag next to the store. The building is well maintained, but the lights are out and it carries a general air of abandonment. Just a reminder from you earlier, uh, uh, that woman, she gave you a, um, a key code to get into this building. Like, I'll, I'll remind you of the uh, mission statement for her. It says, Although Abrita doesn't know much about the technological world that like Senna described to her, she expects Mandolin has more information. Although Mandolin's in prison, he may have hidden some notes or other valuable information in his private residence. She has a passcode to the personal entrance module, and she asked the PCs to look around. So she gave you the passcode to look around. So we have the passcode, so we're just inside? No, you guys are outside still. And there's a key, key oh. and there's a keypad right there. Oh, okay. I want to hack that. Well, we have the passcode, don't we? Oh, I thought Brian said we just, we didn't have it. I thought he said... I said she gave you the passcode to go into the building. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well. well, so whoever wants to walk up and just enter. I mean, I'll do it if no one wants to do it. Is that like you're going to do it? I walk up and enter the passcode. Nothing happens. Motherfucker. Right. Now I want to hack it. Now you get to hack it. You tend to hack it, then you realize, hey, the thing has no power. What okay, <laughs> I'm gonna look at the. I want to look at the console and see if there's like an obvious like cord that goes runs along anything that's broken. You do see it, as quite, it could be possible to um, uh, reroute auxiliary power to the unit, or possibly force the door open. If you wanted to force the door open, you could try to do a strength strength check, or you could do an engineering check. Dude, reroute, hundred. I'll do that. <laughs> In the link. You said that's an engineering? Yes. Wow. <laughs> zap! You zap yourself on accident and trying to reroute power. You miss the hit points, it just stun you. Anyone else want to try, like Edgar? Is it, um, you said it's an engineering check? Yeah. Yep. Um, can I go for it? Go for it. Knuckles, twenty. The panels of the keypad comes to life, and th this is the this is the one for the private residence too, by the way. So, what do you guys like yeah. to do now? <laughs> like Paul's gonna smash that door down. Well, no, the keypad's online. Oh, what do you want to do? I enter in the. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds easier. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Who got the code? Who got the code? <laughs> beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. The keypad turns on. Turn, it has a green light. And the door opens. Okay, I walk in. Yeah. And by the way, I'm going to describe this just the way it looks right now. There's t two shipping container like structures. They both have doors. And they both have keypads. And you guys started the one with the, uh, the personal entrance. But... You look inside, and it's a complete disarray, like the place has been trashed and searched. Uh, I want to look around the room. I want to kind of see if I can discern what, what it was that people were looking for. or what. They... Uh, roll a DC uh, per perception check.
I rolled. You look through the papers, but strewn about the floor, but you don't really find anything worth the uh, value that that you can understand. You do find some information, but you don't you don't really know if it's important or not to you. Anybody else with perception can look around too. Oh, oh, oh. oh, wait, sorry, go ahead. I uh, was oh, just wandering around randomly. Uh, I'll roll perception with a second. Among the papers, you find a report that looks pretty interesting to you. It indicates that someone named Goya's brother and two nieces were injured in the accident, but expected to make a full recovery. You think this might be useful later on, so you grab it and take it with you. Is so that all there is to do here? That's all you can really find in this particular building. There is another building. Okay, let's go check out that building. Mm-hmm. And there's a building that has a keypad which is active. Can we enter the key? Rejected. Someone hack it. Some computers and bypass the wall. Okay. Twenty one hack. Oh, oh wait. Good. No, that's that was Matt's roll. I'm twenty eight hacking. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. You uh bypass the keypad and you learn that the combination which is one 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 one. <laughs> and the uh door to the uh to the building opens and you kinda of notice that it looks similar to like a chapel almost. Can somebody do a religious religious religion check? I don't think there is a religion. To be a culture check? Culture check? Oh, I'll do the culture check. <laughs> it actually says religion check. I don't know. <laughs> the closest thing you may have. isn't religion. I see mysticism. That could possibly okay, be. Do... It literally just says religion check in the book, so... Uh, yeah, just... <laughs> whatever would be closest. You think mysticism or culture? Culture. I think culture, yeah. Okay, I'm a cultural historian, so I would use that. Like my profession level, right? For mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um. So the phrase that says, All are welcome before the master at the first vault, you learn that it's a common welcome to an Obdurarian chapel. So you recognize this is like being like a chapel. You knew the passcode all along. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys got in, you guys hacked the console, and you guys learned this is kind of a chapel just because, hey, you recognize that, actually. Um, let's see here. All right, I look around. Yeah. Um, so you see several simple benches and an altar bearing Abdar's holy symbol. Um... And the uh, whole symbol of the golden key, which you recognize because of your culture check earlier. Um, this chapel has also been searched, but not particularly well. Uh, somebody do a uh, perception check, check again. Okay. 
18. Yep. All right. Um. You don't really find anything, but you just have a suspicion that something's around here. Like, like you just didn't look hard enough. <laughs> With an 18? Holy crap. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh, I am looking around too. Yeah, I think I... <laughs> you got one more chance to try to find something. Then I'm going to cut you guys off. I'm not going to give it to you guys for free. <laughs> So one more person try to do a quick check around the room just see if you could locate anything. I don't even have any perception. Who has uh I mean Some I think perception is plus four. Yeah, do that then. Oh. Okay. Oh. Did it. Nope. <laughs> you guys, Hi. you guys search his room. You spent, like, you worked it, you did as hard as you could, but you guys don't find anything of if, if interest in here. <laughs> so, that's it. You guys, uh,. You guys, you guys spend a lot of time in this room. You guys, you guys just just can't find anything. So you, you don't think it's worth spending any more time here? All right. So we uh, that's this this whole area, right? Yep. You don't find right, anything. So we... You don't find anything useful in the chapel. You going to the get story? out of here? This is a waste of time. Yep. <laughs> He had a roll of 22, by the way. Damn. I'm just, I'm just letting you guys know that. <laughs> so, you guys, you guys, the, the chapel is a bust. It happens. You guys, you, know, you guys are not going to get absolutely everything 100% in these kind of games. So, you guys want to head back to the junk shop, take a rest, or you want to stop it right here in the chapel? We should probably stop it here. Yeah, we could call it here. Okay. Yeah. When's the next time everybody's available? This Saturday, I think about going another like all day hike again. This time, I'm going to try to go on a uh, oh, hike as much as I can while the weather's nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> but but uh, uh, tomorrow evening I'm free all day, but I think somebody said no Fridays. But in Sunday I'm free all day too. Sunday. Yeah. I can do Friday. I just can't do it five to six. All right. Sunday works. I'm going. Yeah. Sunday it is. Yeah, as soon as it's going to get interesting after we kind of wrap up the, all these little tiny s submissions. It kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy. Like you do the main quest for a bit and you have to do the side quest. <laughs> yeah. Final <laughs> Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> yeah. I'm be so sick next next session. I'll be unloading. So, do you guys want to just try to like, camp out in the uh, church and like try to do some re recover some stamina or something like that? I'm gonna. I'm leveling up right now. Do you guys get hit in the last fight? Oh yeah, you got needed. <laughs> yeah, we could do one of those uh, ten minute rest. All right. One resolve point to recover your stamina. If your if your stamina is suffering. Yep. Mine ain't, but I'll take a yeah. breather. And if you want, take a few minutes, go over your character sheet, you know, upgrade your stamina uh, total and hit point total, and get it. If you want to get a new feat, go and pick one. But yeah, there's a lot of defeats. There's so many you can pick from. <laughs> yeah, I know. <clears throat> Next yeah. level. 
his 6,000 experience point. Yep. Also, I uh, recorded this whole session too. This time I used uh, OBS instead of XSplit, so maybe it actually captured the audio this time. And I'm going to stop it. Stop the recording.